Today we're going to talk about something scary, something that some people consider to be a deal breaker on WOLED displays and the reason why they avoid them like the plague and will only buy QD OLED. Is this issue real? Yes, it is, but is it a reason you should never buy WOLED? Well, I guess that depends, but let's discuss exactly what it is. So there's a couple of problems we're going to be talking about today. And the main one we're going to be talking about was actually introduced to try and fix, to try and allegedly fix the problem which originated it. And that problem was chrominance overshoot. Yes, W OLED displays because of the white subpixel, which for the love of God, LG, get rid of your white subpixel, please. I don't care what it costs. I don't care if brightness has to go down. Get rid of your white subpixel. It is causing you problems. But in any case, because the white subpixel exists, because we live in a society, well, unfortunately, as we get close to black, as we get very, very close, that white subpixel causes something called chrominance overshoot. You may have noticed a lot of issues with WLEDs, especially in the past, when it came to near black performance. Performance. There'd be over brightening and other weird little issues that can happen. And because of this, well, LG Display came up with the genius idea of instead of just getting rid of the white subpixel, which they should do, well, they introduced something called dithering. And don't get me wrong, it has its use cases and it can help with chrominance overshoot. However, I actually do think that dithering is worse than chrominance overshoot in a lot of ways for PC gamers specifically. The reason why is because, well, unfortunately, these two issues kind of combine as you get closer, because it seems like you can't like really totally solve all the issues of near black with W OLED, unfortunately. I mean, look, all OLEDs have some sort of issue or another that they're always trying to solve for, but it seems like with W OLED, it's a little bit worse. Well, with dithering, you can actually see on dark gray content, some sort of diagonal lines if you get close to the display. You will see this if you're using it, for example, as a PC gaming monitor. I see it, and to be honest with you, I wasn't harsh enough in my review about this issue when it came to the LG G5. I gave the LG G5 a 10 out of 10, and I'll tell you guys right now, I probably should have given it a nine. Is it a five? Is it a one? No, this one issue, in my opinion, is not a deal breaker. Some people do consider it a deal breaker, and look, that's your opinion, and I respect your opinion. Not however, it is an issue, and it probably should have brought the score from a 10 to a nine. It probably should have, and look, the LG G5 lost the TV shootout this year because of these problems and it deserved to lose because of those problems. However, I still think the LG G5 is probably the best PC gaming monitor on the market today. I monitor and probably one of the best displays money can buy period because it has insanely good brightness, excellent ambient light handling, and it has much better colors versus last year's model. But yes, it has problems and this extends not just to TVs, but also monitors as well. These near black problems are an issue for all W OLED displays. And yes, they can be addressed to an extent. And I do suspect and expect the LG G5 behind me to get better with firmware updates. But at a certain point, you can't solve all of them. And there always will be some amount of either diagonal lines or crawling near black on dark gray that just simply can't be solved on W OLED, it would seem. So that is the major issue. And in some ways you can solve this by simply just crushing that detail. Obviously, that's not a great solution, and we have seen that problem on a lot of W OLEDs in the past as well, but there's one way you can deal with it, just don't show it. So yes, W OLED, it has that problem. Now QD OLED has its own problem. I think the most egregious one is just like turning purple and destroying all shadow detail when any ambient light hits it. So that's its own problem. And also QD OLED has a triangular fashion to its subpixels. So look, no display is perfect. And for some, there will be a deal breaking issue on every display until we do literally have the perfect display, but that's the deal breaker issue on the LG G5. I don't think it's a deal breaker issue, but some do. And I think that us as reviewers have not talked about it enough, and I'm going to be highlighting it more going forward in my reviews. And when I talk about WLED, as yes, this is a major problem, and it's something that LG should be working to address. And hopefully within the next couple of years, they'll just eventually ditch the W in WLED, even if it comes at the cost of brightness, and we can finally get a better image quality when it comes to low light scenes. But 
I want you guys to let me know in the comments below. Do you prefer W OLED or QD OLED? And which one of the issues do you think is worse? Do you think the magenta tint of QD OLED is worse? Or do you think that the worst panel uniformity and the near black issues of W OLED is worse? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And for everything else display related, make sure to get subscribed here on the display guy. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, RuPro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And now RuPro is offering a new detachable and upgradable pure fiber cable that sends the same 48 gigabits per second signal through its ultra thin and flexible housing making it easier to route through walls. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out RuPro on Amazon today.